Hey, look, it's a leopard. And it's not just any leopard. It's a leopard 2 PSO. And if it looks weird, it's because it's missing a whole bunch of things. No, this is not a bug, but this is the beginning of a challenge in which I am going to be playing the leopard 2 PSO with no upgrades whatsoever. And the challenge here is I have to upgrade this until it is completely spaded, which is going to be an interesting one to do. So for every single kill I get, and yes, two assists will count as a kill, I get to unlock one upgrade. And that includes everything from parts to ammunition. And just as a side note, if you haven't seen these yet, these are the cool little upgrade videos that you have that show you exactly what every single thing does. Just in case you weren't sure what a horizontal drive was, or if you weren't sure how effective suspension upgrades might actually be. Yeah, sometimes it's a, it's almost like turning a stabilizer on. It's amazing. But it does mean I lose things such as night vision and thermals, as well as a laser rangefinder. So this is going to be interesting, especially given that this is an 11.7 vehicle. So how effective is the Leopard 2 PSO? Well, let's get to it. Alrighty, so here we go. And what we essentially have is a slightly heavier Leopard 2 A5. In the last video that I did on the PSO, somebody said that, oh, it's based on the A6 without the longer gun on it. And no, that's, that's in no way accurate. <laughs> Right, so ammo-wise, what we have are heat rounds. We have DM-12s and DM-12A1s, actually. So we have roughly 480 millimeters of pen against anything that's not protected against heat rounds. Now, I do have to remember, we do have reduced mobility compared to the standard Leopard. So it is going to be a bit tricky to do any relocation maneuvers. You don't have the typical Leopard mobility that you would expect. And we don't have a laser rangefinder. So that is going to make things a little bit annoying. All right, there's something over there. I might be able to pop up and shoot and I think it's dead yeah I think it is dead what was that oh it looks like an HSDVL you can tell from that weird barrel that it's got that's interesting right I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this ridge line over here now 16 rounds the main reason you want 16 rounds is you have 15 in that ready rack and one in the breach so 16 in total a lot of people look at the number that's in the ready rack of any tank and then just load that amount and you're kind of shortchanging yourself by one shot and as I found that one shot can actually make a big difference. Alright, we've got two dead leopards over there. That's not good. In fact, actually we got a third one over there. Those look like A6s as well. Just gotta be careful of anybody flanking down this side because given that a lot of people are dead on this side, it's entirely possible. Alright, what do we have over here? Some more dead leopards. Bruh. Wow, that's a lot of dead leopards. It's like a hunting expedition out here. Oh, hello, hello, hello. All right, there we go. This TKX over here didn't even see that. Yeah, heat rounds get a bad rep because, yeah, sometimes they'll, you'll hit something that you didn't mean to, like scenery, and then it just doesn't work. But when they do work, they do work fantastically. You just have to be careful about what you hit. All right, this is not safe here. We got something flanking over this way, and then we got something else just over the hill down there. Difficult position to be in. Oh, I should have kept looking out for this guy, because I knew he was around here somewhere. Still, that's what we have these backups for. I gotta make use of it somehow. The only reason I'm allowing myself the backups, by the way, is because of things like casts, helicopters, drones, all of that stuff. Gotta get up and around. Allied smokescreen actually helping me here. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that didn't work. Still, I got one kill, so that means I get one upgrade. Well, it's easy to think, you know what, maybe I should get the DM33 because Sabos are going to be the better option over heat. Or I could get parts. So the way this works is I still have to get all of the upgrades of each tier before I get to the next one. So I can't just straight away get a laser rangefinder. As much as I would love to, that is still only going to be a tier four. So we have some distance to go. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the DM33. Controversial, I know. And I I feel like I'm gonna regret that, but getting the part straight away when a lot of things can one-shot you seems like it might not be the best way to go. Oh yay, it's Fields of Poland, a map that everybody wishes they could completely ban, but bans still don't work. So little fun fact about the PSO, or virtually any Leopard which had the ability to have these upgrades, uh, and this Full disclaimer, this is completely public information, like actually public information. You can find it on KMW's website and Ryan Metal's website as well. But these tanks have the ability to be upgraded with um, an auxiliary power unit, which is what you see on this right side here. That little panel down there, right here is 
the auxiliary power unit. And in case you're wondering what it does, it does the same thing for a tank that it would on a plane, in that you don't need the engine running to operate all of the main systems. Now, of course, you could do this in a normal Leopard. You can actually run the turret with stabilizers and everything with the engine turned off. But like a car, it will run out of battery power eventually. So the APU is meant to allow you to do that without having to run the engine and use a lot more fuel. So this functionality doesn't exist in War Thunder because if I switch the engine off now, the battery still runs down and it doesn't start the APU up. Kind of an oversight, kind of a gameplay balance thing, but it would have been cool if it had it because not all of the Leopard variants in the game have this function. So this would actually go some distance to differentiate the PSO from the rest of the Leopard variants, but I don't know if they'll ever add it or if it's possible to even add it. Still, if you can run the APU in the game, you might as well just run the engine because it makes noise anyway. But still, I thought that was a little cool fun fact for you guys. Oh, something's moving. All right, let's range him. I don't have a laser rangefinder, so he's not going to know that I'm aiming at him. But he did see me. <laughs> Oh, that did not work. Yeah, it's hard to get the jump on somebody when you have 300 mil ping. I just hope that this guy sees that Abrams coming. I should probably ping it. There's a helicopter. Oh, also as a little side note, the Leopard 2 PL has the exact same thing. That's what that actually is, but it's not featured in the game. Different kind of auxiliary power unit, but same sort of idea. Now, one thing I haven't really tried is trying to take on ATGMs in this tank. Like, even though it doesn't have the active protection system that you would expect a lot of tanks to have at this stage, it does have armor that is meant to be better against chemical energy warheads, like that found on most missiles. So, oh. Oh, I'm in this way. Right, I'm backing up. All right, what is down there? I wish I could see more clearly, but I don't have a thermal imager. There is something coming over, like something right over this ridge line right here. There you are. All right, let's just pop smoke since we have loads of smoke. Back up, back up. It's on your left. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, well, the 122B got him, but yeah, that could have been really bad. All right, there's something down here that I can see moving around. There you go. Oh, I didn't get him. He's still moving. He's still mobile. All right, I knocked out his gunner. I literally just headshotted his gunner. All right, I'm going to help you repair. Can I help you repair? Why can I not? Oh, I don't have parts. Oh, geez. Okay, that's why. What? What just happened? I can't shoot over my hull. Uh, this is a problem. This is a big problem. I can't do anything. <laughs> I'm on fire. Uh, he did put me out, but I am still kind of on fire. Okay, I'm not on fire anymore. Oh, he's helping me to repair. Okay, we got it. I need to rotate. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, 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 no. Move, move. Come on, move. <laughs> I caught my engine up for the briefest of moments, and it's dead again. I am so stuck right now. <laughs> Like, my entire turret cheek has been blown off. Look at that. <laughs> All right, I need to get myself turned around because there's a lot of activity going on at A that I can't do anything about. And there's also something else coming up over this ridgeline now. There's also a plane flying around. Basically, there's a lot of bad things happening around me. Oh, I ricocheted and he got my gun. Okay, well, that's bad. That is very bad. <laughs> no, he got me. All right, one more time with feeling. Oh, that's bad. The plane that just strafed me. I mean, that didn't sound like an A-10. I got you covered, buddy. Well, I'm trying to anyway. I'm trying to get up and over so I can actually do something and get up over there. Come on. Oh, he's getting absolutely hammered right now. Oh, but there is an M1 coming. There's an M1. Yeah, I can hear him. Hey, Brahms. Die. Wait, no pen? What? Oh, jeez. Oh, yay. Pure urban combat. My favorite thing. Although then again, I guess it could be worse. We're in a tank that is designed for it, so... But as the name suggests, this is meant for peace support, meaning counterinsurgency and protecting peace. Not fighting in built-up areas. Those are two wholly different things, and there is something right near me. Oh, there he is. Is he coming this way? No, he's going off to the right. Okay, he is going off to the right. He's continuing to go to the right. He knows I'm following him, too. Oh, oh, it was a KF-41. Isn't that the new thing that just got added? The Lynx? Oh, it's a good thing I got the armor to deal with that. Although that might have been something that would have benefited from a heat round instead of a Sabo, but it's fine. That KF-41 I killed, though, that could have been dangerous if he had the spike missiles. Like, he only has two of them, but those things are deadly. I don't know if he can fire them while moving, though. Ooh! Whoa! Oh, I need repair help. Oh, right, because I'm not actually in the capture zone. Um, hang on, cancel it. This is annoying. I need to cancel. Okay, I can't move. Well, sh 
But hey, look, at least I have one kill and we can finally get improved parts. What's improved? Well, I have no idea, honestly. Actually, now that we have the new damage modeling in the game uh, and smoke grenades can be destroyed, I'm actually really appreciating these panels on the side that protect those smoke launchers. I haven't actually had any of my smoke grenades detonated before. It is kind of annoying seeing it happen. Anything to stop it from happening to me is always a good thing. All right, there's a helicopter coming and I don't think it's friendly because I don't see anything on the map. All right, we've got another PSO over here. I think that's something up there on the right. Oh yeah, there was something up there. All right, I don't want to go and push up there because I am vulnerable on the left. All right, let me try to get myself over here. Yeah, see, that's exactly what I was trying to avoid. Going up that high where you're visible to anything on the right as well as anything on the left. Oh my god, I'm knocking down every single tree. If somebody hasn't already seen me, I will be very surprised as watching these trees randomly fall down. Oh, look, there's an M1. Alright, there's that one knocked out. I managed to get him right at the turret ring, which I've never done before. Oh, there's something. There's something. Can I get him? Yes, I can. <laughs> All right, that's two. I mean, look at that. I unlocked parts and suddenly I'm playing so much better. Parts clearly is the god tier upgrade. Don't need anything else. What's coming? I can hear something running. Oh, I hit him. I might have been aiming a little bit too far ahead. I think I spun him. Oh, Jesus. Okay, that, that, uh, <laughs> oh, something's behind me. Oh, my gunner's, oh, um, problem. My driver's knocked out. Also, while we're waiting, I do want to point out just how difficult it is to actually break a barrel like that. The amount of force needed to do that. Like, I've seen collisions and stuff where, like, your thermal sleeve and stuff cracks or gets damaged and things like that. I've never seen a barrel break. It just never happened. Not in, not in my service time, and I've never seen any videos of it happening either. So how exactly that happens is anyone's guess. But, I mean, everything has a way of breaking, surely. It's like, it's what all the engineers are always saying. The more parts something has, the more parts it has that can break. So clearly everything breaks eventually. Okay, apparently they're pinging something down here, which is like right next to me. So there's definitely someone down here. I just don't see him. I only got 12 shots remaining, although I think he's dead. Yeah, I think he's dead. Probably why it didn't register a hit when I shot. Or I could have completely missed. Gotcha. Whoa. All right, calm down. Okay, definitely calm down. What was that? I mean, clearly an auto cannon of some kind, but where? All right, I'm gonna dip down into this little crevice over here. I say crevice, it's a little road. I'm just gonna get down in here and uh, see, is there something up here? Something I wasn't seeing before. All right, there are definitely shots from somewhere down here too. All right, there's a Sam firing off. Ah, I see you. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> I took way more shots than I needed to, uh, or way more hits than I needed to, just because I didn't have a laser rangefinder. It did pepper the front of my tank, though. Actually, not as badly as I thought he did. He shot off a couple of the panels, but I'm okay, more or less anyway. My driver hatch has been hit. But hey, three kills, not bad. The question comes, what should I upgrade? Because, well, we have three points, right? We got three kills, so I'm definitely gonna have to get tracks. We want the extra mobility, and I want the horizontal drive so we can get up to here. And the next question is, of course, what do we get? I feel like, F PE. Mainly because that one match in Japan where I didn't have it, I got set on fire twice. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's a good idea. See, normally I would say the next one to go with is suspension, but we have a gun stabilizer, so that might not be as big of a deal. But normally, yes, you would want to get this. All right, we're on American Desert, finally in the sunshine. I was trying to make it like a sort of dramatic pan upwards into the sky and I just sort of went up its butt, um, which is quite a big butt on the PSO. This is quite the big booty. We do appreciate the big booty tanks here. If you want to know more about the, the PSO upgrade and the program itself, you can check out the video I did on the dev server where I talked about the PSO. But just a little summary, that big butt is an entire chassis redesign from the 2A5, which is intended specifically to stop flammable liquids and any sorts of like, you know, like Molotov cocktails and things like that from being thrown into the engine because the the standard leopard hull has these big radiator fans on top of the engine deck. So this entire redesign is done to provide protection to the engine, amongst other things. But that was that sort of the main idea behind it. Uh, it does have the side effect of redirecting the exhaust downwards instead of backwards, which could actually reduce its thermal signature, but I don't think it's going to matter in War Thunder as much, since the whole back of this tank will glow. Oh, hello. Goodbye. I saw him at the last second and then he exploded. Ah, uh, car 52s. What are they good for? I can hear something else back there. All right, we're gonna cross. The other leopard seems to be keeping him busy, whatever it is. There you are. 
He's on fire. Get him here. There we go. Target destroyed. I hear a leopard. <gasps> Enemy leopard. Hey, the Merkava's moving. Merkava? Merkava. How do you say it? Let me know down in the comments. How do you say it? Is it Merkava? Merkava? Yay, I got a capture. Although captures don't count in this challenge. Not this time. All right, still only at one kill, but that is more than I had when I didn't have these upgrades. Oh, hello, helicopter. Bye-bye, helicopter. Oh, it's an Ariete. Oh, Ariete? It's Italian, so... I have no idea where I'm going right now. But I know their spawn is right behind this rock. So I kind of don't want to go down that way. Ooh, but what I could do is be really sneaky and get in behind here. So I'm not in their spawn. Ooh, I should switch off my engine to be more stealthy. Oh, there's a drone over there. Well, they probably know why I'm here, so... Oh, wait, now I'm visible. Uh-oh. Nobody see me. Nobody see me. <laughs> It was like, just a striker back there. Just sort of sitting there. <laughs> he's just hanging out. Oh, he's moved. Oh, well that was rude. All right, and that was one more kill, so what do I want? I think in this case, I'm just gonna go with the dozer blade. Not because it's particularly useful, but it does complete the look somewhat. You know, it, it it's a it's a PSO after all. But also because it adds like 30 millimeters of armor to the front, so it protects our lower plate. And that actually works, by the way. I mean, not that it really matters against Sabos, because I mean, look at this. It is just gonna go straight through it. But against heat rounds... Oh, there is actually a spot where it can go through. How does that go through? Uh? What? Uh, War Thunder. What? That is not in any way how heat rounds work. <laughs> There's a giant space of just air back here. How is that? That that does not work like that. I want to see this from the side. Yeah, it goes through and then through again. I think the only reason it's actually going through though is because that there's a composite screen or a composite filler behind there that it's kind of stopping it if it hits dead on. But that is weird because it really shouldn't be doing that. But hey, standoff distance. All right, time for another lovely urban map. Uh, to be fair, I actually like cargo port though. As far as like urban maps actually go, this is not too bad. And we get to see if this dozer blade is worth anything. As I said in my video on the dev server, this is an obstacle clearance blade. It's not a dozer blade for digging the ground. It's meant for clearing barricades. But War Thunder doesn't really care. So we're going to do the most realistic thing possible. And I'm going to drop the blade down now. And we're going to dig into the ground on tarmac because that's totally something you can do. It's not digging the ground, so props to them for actually doing that. But it does seem they've actually fixed the hitboxes so it doesn't like clip into things immediately. Yeah, it's like actually being stopped. Yeah, so it does actually have collision now, which is good. I don't see anything up here. What is that? Oh, hello! Okay, I'm gonna just... Oop. Hang on, hang on, I'm stuck against the wall. There we go. I'm gonna rotate myself over here. There's something moving onto the B point. I can hear it. Okay, we got a T80 moving up. I'm gonna go up together with him. Wait, I didn't pen? Excuse me? Get him, quick, reload. There's an Apache above me right there for some reason. And I'm dead. <laughs> I got distracted by so many things all at once. All right, so we got that one kill. And get with the extra weight of the dozer, you can actually feel the amount of bobbing that you get on the suspension just for because the weight's all the way at the front. So I'm gonna go with the suspension upgrade first and we'll worry about the rest. I mean, adjustment of fire is not that big of a deal with the kind of ranges that we're engaging at. It's, it's fine. The brake system, same thing. Although you do feel it a bit more with the weight of the dozer, as I said, so we might need that later. But definitely getting the brakes before adjustment of fire. Now that I'm hearing it more, the sound of the Abrams turbine engine has actually changed. Because it definitely sounded more like a vacuum cleaner before. Now it kind of sounds a little bit more like an actual turbine engine. <laughs> but then again, a lot of engine sounds have been reworked. Although not the Leopards, because it already did sound exactly like the real thing. So I don't think there was much to change with that. Although somehow, I feel like the Abrams engine has... It's more annoyingly drony than it used to be. That That's the difference. All right, let's just quickly range that. All right, it's a 450, so I think if I set my range to about 500-ish, we should be good. All right, I'm gonna just go a little bit more to the left here, because there is something down there that I'm trying to get a beat on. Oh, yeah, because of the dozer blade, I can't go up steep inclines anymore. That's fun. Although that is realistic. Having trained with this exact system before, yeah, there are, like, set um, guidances, I guess you could say, for 
how to maneuver with it attached. So even when it's fully elevated, yeah, the, there are certain things you can't climb up of because it's just going to be in the way. Yeah, kind of a hindrance. I, I honestly might remove it. If I was going to play this outside of the challenge anyway, yeah, I'll probably run the PSO without the blade, just because I don't know if it really helps all that much. It might have deflected at least one shot earlier, but I don't think it's gonna matter in the long run. Just having a look on this side, I don't think we're anything to worry about there. I'm just gonna cross up here. Somebody did just take a shot at me. That was aimed at me. Oh, it was a Type 90. From the looks of it. I think so. Or maybe a le Is that a leopard? Either way, that smoke is- it's probably not supposed to be doing that. Alright, there's something on my right up here. I'm gonna quickly check the window. Oh, Jesus. Okay, that's a lot of them. There's a helicopter somewhere. Oh, Jesus. Okay, he knocked out my gunner sight. Where is he? Oh, he's right above me. Come on, kill him. Okay, he's he's very angry with me. And now he's dead. And we got an assist out of it, so I'm okay with that. Alright, that minor inconvenience over. And now we have another one. Wait, he killed me with the, the Hot 29 missile. You know, that missile that's being used right now that seems on to only attack toilets. Why does that work in this game again? Oh right, it's a fantasy game. All right, I can see War Thunder is really keen on giving me the proper test of the urban survival capabilities of the PSO with all of these urban maps it's giving me. So we're gonna make use of it, I guess. Hello. What was he doing? I do not know. All right, there's an Abrams to my right. Hello. Yeah, just back up just a little bit, just a little bit. Okay, fine. I'll get you instead. Yeah, I'm not gonna peek the same place over and over. I'm gonna back up a little bit here. We're gonna go... Oh, hang on. Hang on. Hello! Okay, we're just gonna use our superior reverse speed over here. I did see somebody come up over there, and I don't really know what I can do about it from here. Oh, but he is going over to that side, so that's fine. That's fine by me. There's something down that road, too. But we're focusing on what's in front of us, which includes right around this corner. There he is. I've lost count of how many that is. I think it's four or three. I don't dare look at the scoreboard right now because there's so much going on near me. All right, I'm gonna pop smoke this way. Oh, somebody knows where I am. I know he's coming. Oh, what? Okay, I knocked out his breach. We're good, we're good. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Okay, it's an assist, but we're all right. And if I was to do a quick guide on what's the best way to use smoke grenades, that's how you use them. <laughs> Whatever you do, do not sit in your own smoke. Smoke grenades are like farts. Don't sit in your own fragrance. And we're clear on that side, I think. Oh, never mind. Never mind. We weren't. We were very much not clear. All right. Put out the fire and let's repair. And let's hope nobody comes up on my left. Whoa. What was that? What are you doing? Get out of here. Okay. That's dealt with. I want to help put him out, but I can't. He's on fire. That's really annoying, you know, when we're doing repairs that we can't, like, help somebody fight a fire. <laughs> but I guess it makes sense. It's simulating the crew doing it, right? So, uh, yeah, it kind of makes sense. But we help each other. Look at that. Leopard bros. All right, I had a spare moment. That's three kills and two assists. Pretty good, all things considered. All right, I want to get in behind this chunk of debris, which I guess used to be houses. And um, I'm going to try to capture the C point here. I'm going to watch this exit here, because that's where their spawn is, right? Right there. I did see something fly past. I should move. Whoa, whoa. All right, back it up. Go, 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 go. Oh, I'm not even in the zone. Ah, I, I'm really, really on fire right now. <laughs> I need to put the fire out. Yeah, that wasn't a lot I could do about that. Oh, that guy behind me was alive? It's weird, I didn't even know that that Tam behind me was alive. I thought he was dead. All right, so three kills and two assists. That's four in total, so we get four upgrades. So of course, brake system, adjustment of fire. I think this is a good time to- I completely forgot to uninstall the smoke grenades at the beginning of this, so if you were furiously typing away about that, yeah, I completely forgot to uninstall the smoke grenades, so I've had them from the beginning. Thankfully, I didn't use them that much, but yeah, that was a mistake. But we're gonna make up for it now, so I'm counting that as the upgrade for this particular round. So, one, two, 
three, and four. So we're almost there at the end. So something interesting that I've just found out, you see the weight of the tank here is 67 tons, right? When you add the dozer blade on, it should in theory go up. I don't know if it's just the UI having an issue because the tank definitely feels heavier in the game, but it doesn't change the numbers. And now I'm not gonna say how heavy the uh, OCB actually is but you should notice a difference because it's it's a weight change no matter what yeah probably an oversight or maybe it doesn't even matter all right there's a burning abrams we're facing off against america again oh look there's a helicopter hang on can i target that target air there we go all right we've got t-72s in a field as is their usual habitat all right we got a whole bunch of tanks over here uh let's go with that oh i got thermals now by the way it's always nice okay somebody's on the b point i mean a point they already got the b point i'm gonna go around this way like i would go up and over that but that would make me visible oh actually no change of plan somebody just got hit all right we're gonna use this Ridge line over here. Can I see what hit him? Actually, given how prominent exhaust smoke is now, I've just realized there is actually adva an advantage to this. It completely hides that. So that's kind of cool. The exhaust also only comes out of one side, and I don't think that's correct. Ooh! Wait, what's on fire? I have no idea what's on fire. Come on. I he's over there! Quick, turn the gun! Oh, right. My, my turret's jammed. Hang on. Hang on. I have a solution to this. It's turn the tank. Come on. Fire! Oh, that was all of my ammo that exploded. That explains a lot. Well, I did just fire my only shot, so I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to do about this situation. And there's somebody else coming. Now you go away. You go away. I've lost my breach now. Not that it matters, because I have no... Well, I think I set him on fire, though, so that's alright. Alright, one more time with feeling. And, of course, we're back in... Urban. Alright, let's just see if we can catch any flankers. And by flankers, I mean people on our flanks and not Sukhoi 27s, because thankfully that hasn't been added into the game yet. But let's not kid ourselves, eventually it is coming, as is the F-15, and then all semblance of balance goes out the window. But okay, hot take here, definitely a really spicy take. When the Sukhoi and the F-15 get added, one of two things will happen. We're gonna lose all semblance of realism, or we're gonna lose all semblance of balance. We can't have both. All right, well, the T-80 UM-2 is going down that way. He can be the distraction while I go down over here. And I can hear another Abrams. Honestly, I'm starting to prefer the old Abrams engine sound. Even though it was less realistic, it was like, it had character to it. This is just sort of a hum. It's just a really flat humming noise. It's annoying. Whoa! All right, I'm gonna sit still, make him think I'm immobilized. Pop the smoke. And then we're gonna go through the smoke. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, he's turning, he's turning. Turn around, turn around, turn around. No, 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 I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. <laughs> Okay, that failed completely. The stupid dozer blade got in the way. And you know what? I'm, I'm taking it off. Did that refund a point if I take it off? I feel like it should, but I'm not gonna do that. But let me know in the comments, what do you think? You know, I'm actually starting to think that we should be given, like, tank presets. Because there are certain maps where the dozer blade might be useful. For example, on this map, if I wanted to go down there, having the dozer blade might actually be useful for having that extra protection or just pushing things out of the way. And But if I'm going up on a ridge line or if I need to use steep slopes, I don't want it to, to be hanging off the end and getting in my way. So, yeah, having that uh, available as an option, depending on the map, that might be nice. I don't know if we'll ever get it, but it would be nice. Okay, I feel really exposed here. Come on, get up, get up, get up. Don't get shot in the butt. I said don't get shot. Oh, well, technically that's not the butt. But I still said don't get shot. I don't know if that was the helicopter that was shooting at me or not. All right, let's have a look. What did shoot at me? If it wasn't the helicopter, was it an auto cannon? Okay, something can see me. Like, from here. I mean, it's got to be like a, a thousand meters away at least. Okay, there's something down there too. But that's not what shot at me. Very curious. I see you. Gotcha! There's one. We're using hull down tactics today. Kind of keeping an eye on where this leopard goes because I did see something shooting down there. Oh, well, the enemy advance has completely stalled and now our spawn is being bombed and there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. So, let's go somewhere else. Like, I do only have one kill, but I have stayed alive this entire time. So, if this was a survival challenge, I'd be winning, but it's not. That being said, that is an example of how to do hull down correctly, more or less. The thing is, if I did every video, 
video where I played like that, my score would be better, but nobody would find it entertaining. So for anyone who ever wonders why I don't play like that, now you know. But I did genuinely have somebody ask, like, why I don't do certain things or why I play the way I do in videos, and it's because it's more fun. That's really the whole reason. If you've watched this far, and you enjoy the more funny and entertaining ways of playing, rather than the sweaty camping in the corner way of playing, then comment down below with the the words domination thunder, and we'll see how confused we can get people. Yay, we're visible on the minimap. Hi. Oh, come on. I only shot at you with my machine gun. Well, that's just oh! rude. All right, this kind of map's good for, like, long range, but without a laser, could be tricky. I like oh. how this leopard's just sort of sitting here on this road. Like, you are gonna get side-shotted if you stay there. <laughs> I, on the other hand, uh, I'm still pretty vulnerable, actually. <laughs> I think it's time we move. He follows the other leopards, but I will drive in the ditch. I don't trust the road. Right, actually, I'm gonna go down this way. Hey, what do we have? I see you. I don't know what I hit. Oh, I got his gunner. Ooh, nice. Oh, that was a good follow-up shot. Okay, I should probably not stay here. That's what you call skylining yourself. Well, there's no sky behind him, but same, same. <laughs> same idea. So from this angle, I should more or less be okay. Well, I might have spoke too soon. Somebody's on the left. All right, where can I go from here? Mm, see, if I go over like there, my turret's still visible. Okay, but I, I might be able to peek up a little bit. No, can't see him. Okay, let's figure something else out because I think somebody's gonna push through the valley down here. All right, I'm gonna move. This is a risky one. Okay, nothing down there. All right, I'm gonna join this 2A4 down here because he needs help. Am I am I connected to him? There we go. Pull. Come on. Okay, I need to flip. Uh, I need to pull a different way. Hang on. I'm, I'm gonna pull this way. Can I pull him this way? That's just rotating him. Okay, this is this is not working. Um, I'm gonna pull him this way. We'll pull him down the slope. There we go. This is like leopard supporting leopards. You love to see it. I honestly feel like doing a good deed like that should give me like an upgrade. What do you see? What do you see, buddy? All right, let's go. I'm with you. Oh, I didn't pen him. Okay, I will, I will try to help you. Did, oh, that didn't even pen? What is that? That, that didn't pen either. Okay, that's a redded out barrel. That okay, now his gun's out. His gun's out. I, that's something. Can I get him here? Okay, well his gun's probably still knocked out, so that's not helping. Can I can I aim a little lower maybe? Uh let's go here. Okay, his gunner sight's out now. I'm gonna hit that again. Okay, I just knocked out his breach again. He's gotta be so annoyed with this. Yay! That's two assists! Yeah, that's two assists! We got it. Well done. <laughs> I mean, I gotta say, not every game is gonna be all about, you know, getting the highest score and the highest kills, but in this, this is one of those matches where that is exactly the case, and I'm still so happy with it. Surprise! Just so wholesome teamwork is what this is. Alright, I should probably reload because I'm running kind of low on ammo here. Have a quick scan. I don't see anything down that way. I right, got some of our teammates being shot at. Probably from spawn, I think. Because that's probably all that's left now. Is just whatever is spawning. So, yeah, I guess that's a match done, really. But also, I really like the way this guy's playing. He's being cautious. He's using terrain. You know, he's not just charging ahead. That's the way you do leopards. I mean, look at all of these guys. Well, I don't know where that guy is. He's under the floor somewhere. Oh, there we go. Two assists and probably the most wholesome gameplay I've ever seen. <laughs> that was amazing. But that's the rule. So two assists is one kill. So we get one point. And I'm going to, of course, have to put it into filters so that we can unlock the next tier. And of course, in order to prevent that exact scenario from happening again, as much as I would love to go for the laser rangefinder straight away, the difference in pen with this DM-53 is absolutely worth it. That's literally 200 mils more pen. Or almost 200 mils more pen. Which would fix all the problems I was having with fighting that T90. Alright, we got ourselves a little bit more engine power now. Let's see how much difference it makes. Honestly, I can't tell. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely there. It's just, look, it's 40 horsepower. And like... 0.3 seconds less on acceleration time. So it's there, just you might not notice it. 
but you know what? I'm not gonna say no to more mobility. Also, what is going on there? I know that's the Swedish leopard, but that sight is crazy. <laughs> that's hilarious. And it goes back in. All right, is there anything? Should be on the right, right? Oh, I see you. I see you. Let's see if I can bait him to come out. Considering there's like two other guns pointed in that direction. Oh, I saw a muzzle flash. Let me see if I can... Yeah, that was definitely a muzzle flash. There's something over here. Let's see if I can get the Leclerc to look that way. Leclerc. Over there. Okay, well, the Stritzvans is looking that way, so we're good. Yeah, fun fact. The Swedish Leopard is the only Leopard variant to not actually be a Leopard. Because they have different naming conventions for everything. So... Ooh, that's a Merc. Like, not mercenary, I mean Merkava. He nearly killed me. Okay, well, the rain's coming. And by rain, I mean artillery. Also, cloudy. Rain probably is coming. Oh, we do actually have a drill for artillery. And the drill is, close your hatches and drive really, really fast. The best way to avoid artillery is to not let it hit you. Yeah, sometimes things in the military are just not complicated. And sometimes they just are, for reasons no one will ever understand. I'm a bit concerned about our flanks here because of that. Oh, I just shot his... Stupid breach. It was a striker and I shot the one thing that wouldn't kill him. His gun. <laughs> He's got a giant unmanned turret and I shot that. It's fine. That's two assists though. Two assists is one upgrade, right? It's not as interesting, but it's something. But I am very surprised the 50 cal didn't do as much damage. I could have sworn 50 caliber could shoot through the uh, striker's armor. But maybe I was thinking of something else. Then again, I was hitting the slope section of it, so maybe... Oh! Oh, that's a T-80. Okay, I, I thought I was hearing something. It sounds like... It is! It's an Abrams! I knew I heard it. Get him! There we go. <laughs> yeah, his blowout panels didn't work that time. Shot him right in the ammo. Oh, we lost a leopard. Oh, no. Oh, he's invulnerable. Oh, jeez. Okay, that was a bad idea. Don't go out there! Don't go out there, Leclerc! It's... It's not safe. They have spawn protection. <laughs> not that I was going for that anyway, but still. I'm very vulnerable. My breach is out. And I think... Oh, I was thinking we might have company on the left, but looking at the map, that's not likely. I have a rock on my head. That's fine. Worst things have happened. But honestly, in the time I've been playing this, the thing that's probably not going to surprise anybody is that the Leopard 2 PSO... Without the dozer blade, plays exactly like you would expect. <laughs> Honestly, exactly the same as any of the other leopards. So, and, that, and I mean, that's a good thing. The extra armor, I mean, I don't really see much of an effect with that. Like, it's probably gonna save you from flanking shots with um, ATGM, so there is that. All right, and with those two assists and one kill, I'm definitely gonna unlock the DM-53. And in this case, it's a toss-up between the transmission and the laser rangefinder. I think we're gonna go with the laser. So that's our two upgrades. And we only have three upgrades remaining, so we're getting into the final stages of this, for sure. Ooh, and for the first time, I think, in this video, it's the new map, the Atomic Hearts map. I gotta learn what this thing is called. It's Test Site 2271. It's not a very interesting name, but there we go. But we do have this sort of test track over here, which is full of lovely ridge lines, which I've said before, is the natural habitat of the leopard. I see you. Okay, I landed a little short there. This is a terrible spot. Like, it's really shallow, so I don't actually get much of a ridge line at all. And there is actually a second tank down there. I just saw him. Yeah, right here. I did see him. Okay, that was short as well. All right, repeat fire. All right, that's a good, good hit, good hit. Knocked out his commander. Challenger's repairing, but I don't know what hit him. All right, we're gonna go around this way. Cause yeah, it does look like we're being flanked on this side. Yep, I see him. He's moving. Ready, go. There you are. Hmm, not a good angle. It is a striker, so that's an unmanned turret. Kind of pointless to be shooting at it, to be honest. Ooh! Cheeky? Was that from that helicopter? Or was that something else? Okay, I'm in a bad spot. I'm in a bad spot. Let's back out of this. I'm gonna go back behind this. Don't go out! Don't go out! 
there's like three of them. I mean, if you include the striker that's on our flank right now, which I very much do because he's right here. <laughs> he saw me. <laughs> All right, back at the cargo port. I'm definitely not going to be making use of any ridge lines here, so we're going to have to play a lot of corner cover stuff. So I'm really glad that we went for the uh, range and firepower upgrades instead of mobility, because, you know, it's not like that would have been useful in this scenario at all, or anything. Alright, somebody's coming through, there we go. Gotcha. That was a little low. Probably should have lased it. Um, possible enemy just went through. Okay, we got an assist on that one. Somebody on C, possibly two tanks on C, and I think we got something coming up on the right over here. This is all just based on stuff I can hear. There's something. I don't know if he can see me. I mean, he's not looking at me. I don't think he knows I'm here. All right, he's looking the other way. Get him. Gotcha. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Ooh, that thing is fast. But you can't hit anything when you're moving that fast. Ooh, what what hit me? What hit me? Oh, there's a T-80UK behind me. I was like, I could hear something moving around, but I couldn't hear where it was. All right, that was a quick one. Definitely gonna get the mobility upgrade. Transmission first, then engine. Contrary to what a lot of people might think, the extra engine power is not really that useful if you don't have the gears to match. Oh, already you can actually feel that difference. I mean, in stock form, the Leopards are not slow. Not by any stretch. They are some quick tanks, but yeah, that uh, that transmission upgrade, <laughs> that's a big difference. Because we got an average speed on this road of like 55 right now, whereas previously we would have been doing about 40. So you definitely feel that. Alright, something down there. Definitely took out a friendly. Ooh. 2A5 over there is on fire. Well, he's dead now. There's a Leclerc down there. Alright, we're gonna dive into this little football pitch down here and use this as our ridge line. We're very, very close range with whatever's up here. I can hear it still. It sounds like an Abrams down here. There's the Leclerc. Oh, he hit me as well. All right, I think the Abrams is here or coming around this way. I can, I can just hear it. It's gotta be on the other side of this. Question is, which, which side is he gonna pop up from? I'll watch this side since the other PSO is going down that way. Oh, okay, he's dead. All right, that's fine for me. All right, let's get into these buildings over here. I just heard a missile go over my head. I'm wondering if there might be a helicopter up or a drone, maybe. Ooh, what took out that 2A6? Well, I'm gonna go in there and find out. It's a Leclerc. I'm wondering if this BMP might be able to go and... Oh, you know what? He is. Or he did try, anyway. Let's get this ADATS. And we're gonna back into cover. Because, uh, yeah, there's something coming towards me. <laughs> Alright, it's disappeared. That is their spawn down there, so... You know, whatever pops up can hit me and I can't hit them. So this is a bad situation. But yeah, I think it's safe to say that that is the game. <laughs> Three kills, one assist. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Leopard 2 PSO. It is fantastic. If you were to compare it to the other Leopard variants, even in just the German tree, this is a lot going for it. And it's been a lot of fun playing it. If you wanted to know as well what the stock grind would look like for you, and I'm sure a lot of you guys can probably do this entire stock to spaded, run a lot faster than I could. But at the same time, it just goes to show that, you know, with a well-designed tank, that a lot of those extras that you would get aren't something that you necessarily need to depend on. At the end of the day, it is still a Leopard 2. It is still a really fast, decently armored, and very accurate quick-firing tank. Are there tanks that can do that better? Sure, there are tanks that might be able to get up to speed faster. There are tanks that have better armor. There are tanks with fast autoloaders, see the Japanese tree for that. But at the same time, it does a very specific thing very, very well. And that is being able to use ridge lines. Because there are tanks that can do ridge lining, but there isn't an MBT, at least in my knowledge anyway, in the game, that does ridge lining as well as the Leopard series does. And I know that's a bold claim, and some of you guys are- you feel free to debate that down in the comments, but this is sort of my take on the entire thing. And when used right, honestly, 
you can really make a lot of very, very good things happen. Because as you've seen today, when there's enough Leopards on the map working together, there's not really a lot the other teams can do. And that includes teams made up of Abramses or Leclerc's. And with that, I am going to leave that one there. Don't forget to leave a like, of course, if you've enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you are brand new to the channel. My name is Panza, and yes, of course I'm biased. I was a former Leopard 2 commander. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. God, I love this thing.